Radio. Radio. Live from the ATL, I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast. It's been a long time, folks. Welcome back. Um, took yes. a little break. Uh, cool B, you in the building, man. How's everything out there in the big city of Los Angeles? LA is cool, man. It's just burning up out here. Everything is, um, I'm not complaining about the weather. It's hot. And uh, people are out and about, you know, um, it's a lot of moving and shaking going on. I'm, I'm you know, glad to see. And, uh, but, you know, it's it's not a bad vibe right now. Everything is just pretty chill, but it's hot. <laughs> right. I think it's, I'll be honest with you, bro, I think it's hot just about damn near everywhere right now. Yeah. I spoke to my mom earlier. She said New York was in the hundreds. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty hot. It's pretty damn hot down here. Um, actually, the um, central um, AC unit at the crib actually went down and we actually just starting to get it back up. Mm. So, you know, we spent like the last few days and pretty much in hell, <laughs> you yeah. know? So I um, know, I know how that, uh, that Georgia heat is, man. It's just very hot and humid and, um, you know, and you got to kind of like, kind of cut the air with a knife, man. That's how hot it gets done. I know it very well. And, you know, for all the listeners, um, uh, for the first time tuning in, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mercy and Cool B got up, and we yep. actually took a trip yeah. to um, Savannah, yeah, Savannah, Georgia. Uh, me and my lady, a few other friends, and uh, mm -hmm. we were out there for about four days, and we had a had a I, well, I had a good time out. And what do you think about Savannah? No, it was cool. Um, I'm familiar with Savannah. Um, my grandmother, when she first moved to um, Georgia in in the late '80s. Her first destination was Savannah, but she didn't really like it like that. But she moved over to Atlanta because I guess it was a little bit of a faster pace. But um, but Savannah was nice. The food was good. Uh, we had a good time, man. It, it was good to see um, um, to visit that place again because that's not my first time there. I, I haven't been there since I was a kid. But um, you know, it was a lot of food, um, a lot of great people, a lot of nice people down there. Uh, and it's a very historical place. Absolutely. Lots of history. Yeah. A lot Lots of history. dope history. Yeah. Um, a British style city. Um, yeah. You can see the squares, you see the designs, the layout. And a lot of people consider Savannah the most haunted city in the United States of America. Yeah. So you want to, um, if you're like really interested in stuff like that, um, shout outs to MREC. He got this series called Spooky Hours. If you, you know, you, you're into stuff like that. You definitely want to check out Savannah and do a couple of ghost tours. So yeah, definitely recommend that. Yeah, so but, yeah, sure. Um, Revelations series part two, chapter one, verse two. Yeah. Um, this is actually our second installment. Uh, we just wanted to do a show where we can touch on various different topics and and things that the mainstream uh, media is not really covering. Uh, just wanted to bring our listeners some information that they might not be privy to. Right. Mm -hmm. So before we really get into that, you know, we definitely want to plug in the email, uh, sinradiowave at gmail.com. Um, you could definitely hit us up on the Instagram at sinradiocast, Facebook, sinradio, S-I-N, radiocast. And you could definitely catch us on here on YouTube and also... We are also on um, um, Apple um, Podcasts, uh, Google, and a few other platforms. Uh, Anchor, Anchor, yeah, just to name a few. So you know, check us out over there, and definitely want to shout out my folks over at tttradio.net. Salute to y'all, um, good hip hop DJing um, from the essence, and I know a lot of you cats caught the the dip set. Uh, locks battle and oh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it because it brought it back to the essence yes and um that is definitely the place you want to go to you know get that um get that vibe yeah that authentic hip-hop vibe with the mixing and the scratching and uh listening to some of your old music as well as new music as well too so definitely check that out ttt um radio.net 
So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. So let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Revelations one, uh, chapter uh, uh, Revelations um verse one, chapter two. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Where should we start? Well, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the world, and you know, and as you previously said, that uh, we want to kind of keep people abreast of what's going on because you know, information we get a lot of information at a fast rate, so a lot of things that are out here may get overlooked. So we Absolutely. definitely want to come with some things to kind of put that in your in your psyche of um, things that's been just going on that you know that you may or may not have heard about. So we could talk about a lot of stuff that's happening in the country of Jamaica. Jamaica. Yes. God. Yes. God. Yes. Big up. Well, you got roots in, in Jamaica, correct? Yes, uh, from my grandmother's side. My grandmother is from Jamaica and, um, you know, and also my grandmother's mom, my great grandmother, she was a Maroon Indian. So, wow. you know, um, so I have a lot of a lot of history, a lot of roots on that side. Okay. And um, it's definitely. And, that, and that's not to cut you off, but that's yeah. kind of perfect. Because we are going to be touching on the conflict in Jamaica involving the Maroon tribe um, in Jamaica. And um, what's going on over there, which the mainstream media, of course, isn't really covering. Right. So let's get into it, man. So apparently Jake, Jamaican government wants to mine bauxite, which is in uh, which is um, in the area called Cockpit Count Country. Cockpit right. Country. Mm -hmm. And um, it's considered one of the last wilderness in on the island of Jamaica. Now, cockpit country is maroon territory. Yeah, yeah. And just for all the people who might not know who the maroons are, the maroons are, or a lot of people say they were escaped slaves and also uh, some of the indigenous people that lived on the island that we call today Jamaica. Obviously, they probably had their own name for it, but today right. we call it Jamaica. And the maroons, uh, fought the British to the point where the British actually signed like a peace treaty with yes. the Maroons um, because the Maroons, the, the, the area that they occupy was very, very hard to get to. Right. Uh, the British military just could not deal with the terrain. And these guys were warriors. They got busy and just, just to sum it up, they kicked the British ass, okay? Yeah. And a lot of people in this country are not even aware of the Maroons. So for all of you who might not know who they are, that's just pretty much a, a very brief synopsis of who they are. Yeah. And so what's going on right now is, in case you didn't know, um, the Jamaican government just partnered up with a US-based company. And the company and Miranda now wants to mine in cockpit country and obviously like we said before this is maroon territory yes okay mm -hmm. now what is bauxite mm -hmm. bauxite is pretty much like a sedimentary rock which is relatively high in aluminum content yeah now jamaica used to be the number one exporter of bauxite right okay aluminum products all all types of your, your, your aluminum foil all that stuff comes from uh, mining bauxite and Jamaica was number one at one point but the issue is the wherever the these companies come in to mine the bauxite they leave over this almost like red kind of dirt and it's it's kind of like a like a lake of of chemicals right that end up you know in the neighboring villages they end up um, blowing into these areas and a lot of these people end up having a lot of health issues um, their water sources get contaminated um, it's 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 just an environmental disaster and the government 
obviously partnering up as a 51% majority owner with Noranda is now threatening Maroon territory. And the Maroons obviously have an issue with this. Yes. So, um, so the, the chief, one of the young chiefs of the Maroons, his name is uh, Richard Curry. Mm -hmm. He's definitely opposed to bauxite mining in the, in the uh, Maroon territory. And again, the wildernesses of Jamaica is where Jamaicans get their water source. Yes. Yeah. So obviously, if you're going to be mining by a natural water source, you risk potentially contaminating that water source. And that's a big deal. You know, water is a big deal. You know, we yeah. 70, 80% water. And I could definitely see why these people have an issue with these companies coming in there. 1000%. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, you have Maroon Heritage. Are right. you still plugged in? Well, the thing is, um, it's funny, and uh, I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but um, I'm still doing my homework and finding out who the Maroons are and things like that. And um, and this, but, but listening to my, my grandmother's stories about the Maroons, I know a little bit of, about that whole thing, right. um, about the people, but the thing about it is, um, it, it's it's this um, it's it's still a lot of things that um, that I'm as I said finding out, and even when within doing this particular show, I'm, I'm getting more and more information, and uh, and I actually I'm about to order two books on the Maroons, so, um, but. I just think that those people were the way they lived and the way they uh, it's sort of like um, what's the word I'm looking for. They lived in, it's sort of like an isolated area where they're at. So yes. everything that they, that anything and everything that they do there is dependent on the land and the water right. and without any outside sources. So the thing is that when you have a company, or companies that go into this place and start destroying their land, where are they going to go from there? So it's like um, you have to kind of see, like, like what's the next step outside of this? What's what's what what is the motivation behind this? And how are these people going to find out? And who are going to be these people's voice? Because right. we've seen this time and time again throughout history where not just in Jamaica, but here in the United States in um, in Australia, right. in New Zealand, where you have, I would say, certain parties or, or certain colonizers that go into the land, destroy the land, destroy the people just for the, the mighty dollar. Right. So I think that this is just a modern day situation of that so it's like i always say um people don't change i think time and technology changes right so methods might change yeah method methods might change so the thing about it is um i'm like i said i'm still doing my homework on the history of the maroons because the thing is that before my grandmother passed away which is over about a year and a couple of months now you know, um, my family was kind of gathering information on the Maroon people to find out who they were and and to see like how they are played a major part in history and in the Jamaican history. Cool. So I'm right. still I'm still following up on that. Right. And um, as I said, I have a list of things that I'm trying to get to get that information. So I haven't really been on it and doing my due diligence, but I'm making it a point to kind of get that information and to continue that legacy and pass that information on. Definitely. To, that, to my future generations within the right. family. And you definitely want to get on that because right now, uh, you know, with this whole situation with the prime minister, uh, his name is Andrew Holness. Yeah. And he's actually been Jamaica's prime minister, a prime minister since March 3rd, 2016. Yeah. Now, wholeness, um, 
like many other prime ministers in the Caribbean, are, def are, are pretty much connected to the crown, the British crown. And unfortunately, these are foreign powers, uh, foreign entities, and politicians obviously don't have a great reputation with the people in this country, and it's no different in Jamaica. Uh, for instance, with this whole situation with the bauxite mining company, Noranda, um, this prime minister walked into parliament and said, I think it was 2017, and said that he would protect cockpit count, uh, country, okay? He would protect cockpit country. But the area mm -hmm. that he designated to protect is not the entire cockpit country. Mm. So he was double talking. He was uh. double talking. And a lot of the people in these areas are complaining, and rightfully so, that they are affected by the dust. They had one brother, um, they actually ran a story on this on Vice News. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a brother in this village and there's so much dust coming off the lake from one of these mining companies because you have uh, two other mining companies. There's actually a, a Russian company um, when, called Win, Windalco and there's a Chinese company called Jisco. Right. That Chinese-based company, along with Miranda, Noranda, who is a U.S.-based company that partnered with the Jamaican government. And this poor brother has to keep his clothes in suitcases because there's so much red dust just building up around his house, around the speakers in his home. And he just, he just can't keep it out. And he said, this dust is going to kill him. Mm -hmm. He has high blood pressure, uh, other ailments. And the man just said, plain, you know, plain old, he just said it straight out. I, this is going to kill me. Right. And um, the company, all they did was give him some drums to collect water in. And that's about it. I mean, they got this lake that contains all these pollutants and stuff like that. And, and the, the after product of once the um, aluminum and, you know, that whole process of, of the bauxite mining is complete. The leftover right. residue is just is just very harmful to the environment. Yeah. And it's sad because when you think of Jamaica, you think of the beaches. Yeah. You think of the, you know, you think of the tourism. You know, you think of those things and you think of the cruise ships. You think about, you know, the fresh food, the, the, the fish, yeah. the fruits, fruits, you know, vegetables, the resorts, right? Yep. And those areas are protected because they're on the coast. Yeah. But on the interior of the island where many of these maroons live is not looked at as important as the coastal regions that bring in the tourism. Now, once upon a time, bauxite mining in Jamaica was number one in the world. They were number one. Yeah. But it has since decreased. And now Jamaica actually ranks number seventh in the entire world. Um, they're behind Australia, Guinea, yeah. mm -hmm. China, Brazil, India, and Indonesia in bauxite mining. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the residents have a very valid complaint because Jamaica is the poorest English-speaking country in the Caribbean, followed yeah. by my country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we're going to touch on... Um, the, that uh, another subject relating to my country as well after this one. But right. Jamaica hasn't really benefited, or the Jamaicans, as we call them today, have not benefited from bauxite mining. And many of the people are already skeptical about this whole new operation that is moving into their territory. Yes. So we got a problem, Houston. Uh, we think that we are going through so much with, with the COVID pandemic and there's other situations that other people are going through that we do not see because unfortunately, mainstream media doesn't see it fit to cover these things because the me mainstream media has agendas to push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this recent situation with CNN and this so-called single mother of three uh, this young lady claimed that she was a single mother of three and come to find out 
the three girls that she had on CNN were not her daughters. Right. And, you know, this lady was able to raise, I mean, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. Yeah, of dollars. I think it was, I think it was over the hundred thousand dollar mark. It was, right. it, was, it was way more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, it's the sad, it's the saddest thing that the media is so not credible now. Uh, the need to be first instead of right. Shout out to Denzel Washington when he said that. Yeah. It's the need to be first. Yeah. There's no need to be right. The information doesn't have to be valid. And I mean, how many questions would it have taken for the, the reporter from CNN to ask for him to finally be able to realize that this woman was not the mother of these girls? Right. You know? And I think that if you look at it, it just shows the direction that we're going in as a people, because you're gonna take three innocent young children and then you're gonna kind of pawn them off like they're your kids. Right. And then the world sees this. Do you not think that this was gonna come back and bite you? Do you not think right. that the parents or the family members of these children would have came forward and said, yo, you're a fraud and using these kids to fund whatever type of fraudulent thing that you're doing? That right. people don't think. I think we're so far gone when it comes to um, just uh, reality and, and what reality is and and people are doing well, so- Perception is reality. Well, yeah, there you go. The media, <laughs> you know, the, the media controls perception. And, right. you know, just like, you know, the Jamaicans, the Maroons, they perceive what wholeness said in parliament in 2017 as their wilderness will be protected, but we are seeing otherwise now. And these bauxite mining companies now encroaching on these people's lands. And, you know, it's gonna take platforms like our platform to really get this out there to the masses that, you know, this is going on right under our noses. While they got us talking about sports and, and, and the vaccine, this yeah. is what's going on in 2021. And it's, it's really sad. Yeah. And also, I'm going to just to um, give another point, too. I think not just this um, box site where they're mining. I think that you have certain powers that be. And I don't want to point the finger and say it's this person, that person. It, it's, it's people who are in charge in Jamaica. They're kind of selling out the island as a whole, not just with this, but just having other countries come in. Right. And, and set up shop like uh, even with China coming into Jamaica, um, they were setting up tolls in Jamaica and charging the Jamaican people um, an enormous amount of money just to use certain roads in Jamaica. So how is this like me and you going over to China and, and cutting a deal with the Chinese and say, you know what, this area over here is going to be our area. So we're going to set up tolls over here in China. And we're going to charge a large amount of money to the people. We're going to tax them to use their own roads here. But we're not from that country. And then certain powers that be are getting large sums of money just to have them set up over in their country. Right. And it's actually happened right here in the United States. Yep. People don't see it. Yeah. China is, is buying out so many parts of our infrastructure. Uh, and we're just like, watching TV all day and, and going to the clubs and, and lounging and these things are happening right underneath our feet. And you know, we need to be a little more cognizant of what's going on. And uh, this is really sad. And I, I, I'm really staying with the Maroon people and the people of Jamaica because that is a beautiful island yeah. and it's a paradise. And to see it being abused, contaminated, for prop for, for for profits is rather disturbing to me and it just shows you that even though we are advanced in technology to some degree our disregard for the environment is disgusting and we're going to eventually pay for it yeah you know one one way or another i think if it's not the um the the people up top who are the major 
uh, I would say the prime ministers or or the major people in charge over there, if they don't pay for it, their people will pay for it down the line. You know they're not paying for it. They're, yeah. they're going to get the profits and the people are going to get the bill. Exactly. So, and that's how it's going to be. So next uh, next topic, man, we got another interesting topic. This is also uh, based in the Caribbean. It's actually my home, my country where I was born, um, mm -hmm. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah. The prime minister of my country, Ralph Gonzalez, uh, Gonzalez, I think I'm saying that right. We just call him Ralph. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was struck in the head. Yeah. By a protesting, they call them a mob, but they're not a mob. They were the people of the island protesting this man's. Ah, uh, he he pretty much mandated the vaccine on an island that barely had COVID cases, an island that barely has jobs to help the people. And, um, you know, I was speaking to one of my boys, my man Madhouse, shout outs to Madhouse. Okay. He said, um, this man got it twisted. He, he is conducting himself almost like a dictator. This right. is what he told me. And he said, look, man, when a roach comes in the in the chicken coop, what happens to that roach? It gets picked. Ooh. And he said he came into the chicken coop and his ass got picked off real quick. Yeah. This I was so bad, it actually made it to World Star. Yeah, I, I saw the video, man, when when the people were just protesting and they started throwing stuff at him and they and they hit him in the head with a rock. Yep. So he had to be flown out, out of the country to go to a hospital. Yeah, he had to fly to Barbados because it, it, it wasn't going to get real ugly for him if he stayed. And um, he's actually recovering right now. And it's, let's read the article here that was uh, posted on theguardian.com. Um, let's see here. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent of Grenadines is recovering in a hospital after a protester threw a rock at his head during an anti-vaccine demonstration in the Eastern Caribbean island. Ralph Gonzalez, 74, was attacked on Thursday as he walked through a group of about 200 protesters to get into parliament. Video footage following the attack showed a dazed Gonzalez, his white shirt turning red as blood streaked down. Security guards rushed him from the scene and he was later flown to nearby Barbados for medical care. That nigga had to get up off the island. <laughs> he would've went in that hospital. He might not made it out. Yeah, it was bad, man. It was bad. So, but here's my question to you, Merce. What do you think is next? What do you think is going to happen with this whole, um, with the mandates and, and, and what um, Gonzalez was doing and um, or Ralph was doing? So what, what do you think the next stop is? Because the thing is that we already know what the issue is or what the problem is. So how do the people move forward from here with, with this, um, the mandate on the vaccinations and and are they going to try to get Ralph out of office? Well, I think a lot of people are, are leaning that way. Uh, I mean, li listen, this man has been in power since 2001. Yeah, it's a 2001. long time. It's, it's, it, 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 it's about time. You know, he brought us a big airport. And ironically, you know, COVID-19 happened, so that airport isn't really making money. Now, on top of that, he has rules in St. Vincent for visitors that are rather ridiculous in, in my personal opinion. Now, why do I say that? Mm. Uh, to go to St. Vincent right now, they're, they're saying you have to, uh, I think you have to provide a negative test, which is not a big deal, right. but they want you to stay at the hotel for X amount of time before you can actually go on about your business. Right. And you know that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. But just to answer your question about where do, what do you think the what do I think the solution is? It's simple: give people a choice. Mm. Give people a choice. Right. The Biden administration, uh, 
Mayor de Blasio, that piece of shit. Socialist yeah. mayor of New York City is mandating as if he's a lawmaker. Mm. And, and this is dangerous, folks. This is dangerous. They do not have the power. They do not listen to Cuomo's speech. They cannot mandate a vaccine that is under emergency authorization. You can't do that. Right. The NFL is, is forcing their players to, to take this jab. And it's not fair. It's not right. Um, the answer to that is give people a choice. People will naturally make their own choice. Look at the flu vaccine. Right. They had a choice. People weren't mandating the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. And you didn't see nobody get bust in their head because of that. And then the thing about it is moving forward that they're trying to mandate this um, vaccine for the COVID-19. Are flu shots going to still play a part in that? as well too are people still going to be taking the flu shot plus the covid shot the flu because the flu right. disappeared bro you ain't yeah. been here the flu is on milk milk cartons around the world well here's the thing winter will be coming up pretty soon so they call that okay season so i want to see did you hear like, anything about the flu last winter i didn't hear anything about the flu okay they, so, so we'll see so the, the flu is apparently missing in action we'll see right? It's missing in action right now. Right. And that is very mysterious to me um, because every year prior to COVID, it was the flu, flu vaccine. And that was a choice. And people that have a problem with that. Now you got the Biden administration. Th these people sound like socialist communists. Mm. Vaccine passports, uh, proof of vaccination to get into restaurants. They are trying to they are trying to institutionalize this shit to where if you are not vaccinated, you're public enemy number one. Listen to what Arnold Schwarzenegger recently said. Mm. Screw your freedom. Mm. Spoken like a true Nazi. Well. He got yeah. Nazi roots. Yeah, he does. He got Nazi roots. And he's, that's, yeah. he's showing it right now. He's showing his ass right now. And it's and a Shame. And that's public information too. That public he, information. Yeah. That he had that. But the thing about it is uh, I saw something online where I, I believe it was in uh in France where people were eating at an outdoor restaurant and the police were just walking over to them while they were eating and, and looking at their phones to see if they had their vaccination on their phone. So the, so these people are eating their food now and the police are standing over them, asking them if they had their vaccinations and taking their phone and touching their phone. I'm like, wait a second, Bo. On one hand, you're asking these people if they have their vaccination, but then you're touching their phone with your hand, your bare hands, while they're eating their food. So that doesn't make any sense to me. So the thing is that I think it's, it's this, they're trying to make a mass push on a global scale for them to go and get this shot. And um, I think that, um, you know, it, it's it's scary times that we're living in because people think, okay, we'll go get the shot and this is gonna help us. But on the back end, what's the real reason behind that? What's the mass push for it? Is it because of your health and safety that these powers that be are concerned or is it more of a power thing Excuse me. Absolutely. To get, to get you caught up in the net. It's absolutely a power play. Uh, and it's so sad because this jab has, hasn't really proven anything. Right. Um, we have people that are telling you, do your part to help others. Get this jab. Help the people around you. Man, listen, that violates the First rule in natural law, self-preservation. Right. Self-preservation. I have to preserve myself, first and foremost. If you're not my child, you're not my wife, no disrespect. But my job is not to 
per se save you unless you're in a, a dire situation, life threatening situation. But when it comes to a choice to take something and not take something, mm -hmm. you're not going to say mob rule. You're not going to say because the mob wants to do it, you need to do it. That doesn't work with me. That doesn't sit well with me. And like I said, that is a communist, socialist approach to doing things. Um, if you're so scared and the vaccine works, why do you care? Right. Why do you care so much? Mm -hmm. You preserved yourself by taking the vaccine, correct? So why do you care so much about what the next man does? Right. The vaccine is supposed to, to help you with all this stuff. So you should be covered. Right. And, yeah. You know, when you look at my country, St. Vincent, a country which is the second poorest English speaking country in the Caribbean behind Jamaica. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's bad, man. It's third world country. And you got a man operating like a dictator. He's not providing jobs. He's not providing new opportunities. He isn't even bringing foreigners to invest in the nation. Right. This All is he true. wants to do is, is, is charge a VAT tax and collect on everybody that's sending gifts to your, let's say you send a, a TV to your family member in St. Vincent. They mm -hmm. got to be taxed. So they got to pay something to get their TV. Mm. And that's sad because these people are already struggling. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is true. And this is this is what we're gonna lead. This is what I want to segue into. This form of government that is prevalent throughout the Caribbean is foreign. It is foreign. And that's why they do not do right by the people. Yeah. They serve the British crown. When you under a constitution, a uh, constitutional monarchy, mm -hmm. when you are serving under that. You have pledged allegiance to a foreign power, the crown, the British crown. And I have news for the folks in islands like Jamaica, St. Vincent, and so on and so forth. You are not as independent as you think you are. Yeah. You are not independent as you think you are. The queen is still the head of your state. Okay. Even though the Monarch doesn't side with any party, they stay neutral. Yes. Which is perfect. So when they come through waving their hands at you, all you asshole line up and to kiss their ass and talk about how good they look while you sit there living, living in areas that are run down that they would never step foot on. Mm. Why don't you take the monarchs through the slums, taking the bottom glass, mm -hmm. taking the bottom town, mm. show them what the mess they left. Yeah. No, you want to sit up there and kiss their ass while they keep you down after they came on the island and expelled many of your ancestors. You sit up here and you honor the queen when she comes through. Y'all are clowns. You're not yeah. independent. Your prime minister don't even, he don't even call the shot. He's just a damn doja. Yeah. He takes orders. He's a figurehead. I remember some years ago, this guy had the nerve to say he's thinking about removing the queen from her position. Mm. Hilarious. Let me ask you a question. You work for a company. Can you go in and remove your boss <laughs> from his company? Not at all. So how can the prime minister who works for the crown, who has the royal military to protect the island because the country ain't got its own military. So if you don't got your own military, you are not really independent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are more interdependent. Yeah. And these, these islands don't have their own military. So you're not really independent like you think you are. You might be independent to kind of handle your own affairs. Right. And things like, that. like for instance, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're 19 years old. Okay. But you live at home. Yep. Still live in your parents' house. As a 19-year-old, you do have some sense of independence, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. 
You might not at 19 years old, you could probably take trips, go where you want to go, you know, but when you come home, you're still under somebody else's roof. You're still playing under somebody else's rules. Yeah. So in that respect, that is pretty much what islands like St. Vincent and Jamaica are. They're independent to a degree, but they're more interdependent on a foreign power to help them out with funding and foreign interests and things that don't benefit the people of the actual country that they claim to be serving. And the people need to wake up and start to see that these people are not for you and they never was for you. These are foreigners yeah. don't care about you. They're not, you know, they're not losing sleep at night. The prime minister of my country is a very wealthy man. Oh, he's been in office for years. Very wealthy man. He was a he was a lawyer. Uh, he's not dumb. He knows what he's doing. But to call yourself the Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, come on, bro. You're not honorable. You're dishonorable. Yeah. You know Jamaica's prime minister. You're dishonorable because you're not even respecting the treaties that your master signed with the indigenous people there. Yeah. The Garifuna that you expelled from the island of St. Vincent. Come on, dude. This is not right, man. And we got to, we got to be a voice for these people, man, because these third world countries, bro, it's so sad, man. The opportunities that are so limited. And then you have a lot of um, smart individuals there, talented individuals there. If you really put some backing behind them, the country can be in a better place or it can flourish in a better way, you know? Right. So the thing is that, um, and it doesn't really even take a lot, but it's just a small investment for a bigger return. Right. But sometimes people don't see it like that. Right, you and here's the other thing, cool. Uh, I said, I'm glad you brought that up because there's very intelligent um, young people there. And unfortunately, the Caribbean and many other third world countries, they suffer from something called brain drain. And that is when some of the most brightest minds end up leaving the island to come to America, to go to yep. England, to go to Canada. Yep. And they take away the talent from the country and what you see left behind is the people that are committing the crimes, the people that are doing the burglaries, the break-ins, you know, the people that really don't have much and never really had anything. Uh, this is why these countries continue to stay in the third world status is because first world nations pretty much draft these people to come to the country. And let it, many of these people, I know people that are left, like for instance, my country and never came back. Wow. Because the experiences and the lack of opportunity, they never wanted to go back and experience that again. As soon as mm -hmm. they get a taste of what was available here, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't go back. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, man. Uh, it's real, man. It's real out here in Revelations series. This is what we're doing, man. We want to just kind of bring the information to y'all that the mainstream media is not going to talk about. They're going to gloss over it. They're going to pretend it never happened. Uh, pretty soon, you might not even see some of these articles online. And, you know, a lot of information is being removed from the internet. Yeah. And we're just trying to, uh, we're just trying to be that light, that beacon for these people and and probably be, and just pretty much be an, an, an intermediary between the free world, the first world, third worlds and so on. So we can give this information to the people and, 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 you know, help those people have a voice, man, at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, man, you know, yeah. that's all we got on it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you, I hope you are now informed and I hope you do your due diligence. And, you know, if you want to reach out to these people, uh, the people of St. Vincent, Jamaica, the Maroons, Hey, hit us up on the email. We got connections. We got ties to these places. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Hit us up, man. And these people need all that they can get because St. Vincent's already went through the situation with the volcano. A lot of people are still displaced. Can't go back to their homes, bro. It's, it's sad out here, man. But to all the people back home, man, I'm, I'm the voice for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to let y'all down, man. And um, Likewise. Same, you know, Jamaicans, same. Grenadians, no matter where you are in the world, I don't care where you're from, man. If you're going through some type of struggle, if your country, uh, the, the, the leadership in your country is not doing right by you, hit us up, man. We'll, we'll put the, the information out there, man. They could try to censor us, but they can't stop us, man. 1,000%, brother. 1,000%. Hope so. y'all enjoyed the show. I'm getting ready to sign off. I'm your host, Mr. Mercy. I'm your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cast. Catch you next episode. Salute, blessings, peace be on to you. Peace.